Okay, now let's talk about single strokes. The burden grip is similar to the Stevens grip and the traditional grip in the respect that if you're at a specified interval, all you're going to do is rotate one mallet and try to get the other mallet to not move too much. It looks something like this. However, the Burton grip does have one aspect of it that is a little bit different than the other grips. For example, a lot of Burton players, especially on vibraphone, if you're doing a mallet run, oftentimes they will take the right hand, they will move it to the position of an octave, and they'll play with that outer mallet like this. Instead of playing with the inner mallets, like a Stevens grip player would do, they tend to play with the outer mallets. And the reason is, if they want to go up and do some cool run and then hit a chord, it's easier to do it with the outer mallet and then hit the chord down here than to move the mallets all the way up and then jump down to the chord. So if you're going to play a scale like, um, like the F major scale or something, it would look like this. So that's one thing to work on. And it actually doesn't take much practice in the right hand because you're using the same muscles here as you would use with one. You're using the same wrist motion. The only difference is you're pinking your ring finger out just a little bit. But that doesn't require much work. Usually what people have trouble with is because you're using more of a hammer stroke here, and, but in the left hand, you're using more of a rotation stroke. So you have to learn how to get enough power out of the left hand to match the natural power that's gonna come out of your right hand simply because you're using a down wrist stroke here and a rotational wrist stroke here. And it takes a lot of work, but after you get there, you can do them pretty evenly. Yeah, mine didn't start out too even, but then they, they evened up a little bit. So yeah, that's kind of how it works. Now in order to talk about double laterals, triple laterals, and rolls, we're gonna have to talk about this hybrid grip. Because with the introduction of Stevens grip in the late 70s, a lot of players tried to play the new literature that was coming out with all these one-handed rolls and these double and triple laterals, and the burden grip was just kind of failing them, and a lot of them dropped it and switched to the Stevens grip to execute those things. Now you can do them with a burden grip, you just have to make some modifications to the grip. Okay, now for laterals and rolls, let's take a look at how the grip works. In your classic burden grip, the palm is going to be face down and there's not really going to be much space between the thumb and the index finger. Now if you notice, my inner mallet can rotate a huge radius, in fact just about 180 degrees, check it out. It can go pretty much all the way over. There's a huge range of motion for the inner mallet. Mm -hmm. The outer mallet can go about two inches. Mm -hmm. Yep, that, that's all I can do without like bending your wrist, but then the other one's going to move too. So you really can't bend it. Now this comes into a, a kind of a problem when you're trying to do a double lateral strokes. Your inner mallet is going to be a lot louder than your outer mallet. It's going to be something like this. Now you can play it really soft to kind of counterbalance that. But you don't always want to do these things soft. Sometimes you want to do them loud. Um, and the same for the one-handed roll. If you try to do it with the default burden grip, it's going to be really inner mallet heavy. And that's where a lot of people have turned to the Stevens grip, because with the sideways hand position, it makes the rolls and the laterals just so much easier. But we can achieve that with the burden grip. What we're going to do is we're going to Stevenize the grip, which instead of having the thumb and the finger in this closed position, we're going to take it and we're going to drop the index finger and drop the middle finger into this more open position. So we're going to start here and we're going to drop it down to there, creating this hole in between the index finger and the thumb. So before, we can only lift the outside mallet about a couple inches. 
But if we open up that grip to this kind of Stevenized position, then we can rotate that outer mallet a nice six inches or so, maybe even nine. So it can go up a huge, huge amount just by taking that index finger and opening it up this way. And a lot of players play with this grip. If you look at the people who play burden grip on marimba now, this is what they're doing most of the time. Now when I go back and play those laterals and rolls, it won't be so inner mallet heavy. Check it out. Now another thing people are doing with this hybrid grip is they're changing the way they achieve the octave. If you remember before, with the classic Burton grip, our fingers are going to be really extended like this. And in order to achieve an octave, your hand needs to rotate sideways a good deal to make both mounts the same height. And that can get a little bit limiting, especially if you're doing really fast interval changes. So the second hybridization of the grip is doing a hybrid towards the traditional cross grip. And if you remember from episode number seven, the traditional cross grip crosses the mounts the other way and it uses the thumb and the finger to spread the mallets. Okay, this is different than the Burton grip, which uses the fingers to spread the mallets, and the thumb really isn't doing anything. So what people are doing is they're kind of taking the best of both worlds, and what they're doing for that octave is they're spreading out the finger and the thumb with the Burton grip to achieve a better angle from your arm to your mallets. It looks something like this. might poke out their other fingers just a little bit. But that's kind of what's going on. And it's a little bit more comfortable than trying to get this thing going on. See, now my arm is at an angle to the mallets. Whereas if I do it the other way, my arm can be more kind of splitting the difference between the two mallets, thus making it more even. And this especially makes rolling an octave with one hand tremendously easier because it won't be so lopsided. Well, there you have the basics of the Burton grip. Now, when you're trying to decide which version of the grip to use, I would say just do a lot of experimenting. Hybrids seem to be really popular these days with hybrid cars, hybrid computers, Protoss and Zerg hybrids. Who saw that coming? I don't know. But I think what you're going to find is that if you're playing vibes, using Gary Burton's version of the grip it will allow you to be really successful. And when you're playing marimba, Using that more hybrid position we talked about is going to allow you to achieve laterals and rolls a lot easier. Now to further your development, there's a couple things you can do. You can practice the technique exercises and method of movement. It works just as well for the Burton grip as it does for the Stevens grip. Number two, you can go on VicFirst's website and Nate Rosaro's page has an incredible in-depth detailed video descriptions of how his hybrid Burton grip works. You should check that out. And number three, if you don't get the Vic Firth podcast, number one, go get it. And then after you get it, check out Pius Chung's videos. He does some just incredible things with the burden grip. I mean, at one point, he does an independent roll on one note with the mallets about this far apart. It's, it's really ridiculous. It's really cool. So check that out. I hope you've enjoyed today's episode. We'll see you next time.